Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give God all the praise, all the thanks, all the adoration for the opportunity to meet or to come together to get into His Word. And it is my prayer that you have had a very good week. And uh, as I have said in the past and I say again, if even it seems like some things have not balanced out well, don't be worried you see jesus said something he said that in this life <laughs> mr irene it's good to see you jesus said something he said that in this life you will have trouble but be of good of, of good cheer i've overcome the world you see so sometimes it looks like there will be trials there will be difficulties there will be challenges it is part of it one thing you must know is that no matter the challenges no matter the difficulties you have already overcome the enemy has no right whatsoever whatsoever to win the game it has already been declared before the game started that you are the winner you have won so relax trust god press on fight on and know that you have already won the battle okay all right let's get into prayer and then we will get into the word father we thank you for taking care of us throughout this week you are a good God. Thank you for traveling mercies, for, for favor, for protection, for healing and health. Thank you for peace that we have enjoyed throughout the week. This afternoon, Lord, speak to us. Touch our lives. I pray for everybody listening to this live who will join us later or who will listen to this later after the broadcast is over. The Lord, your hand will be upon them. You will open their eyes to divine truth. You will establish their feet in you. You will cause them to love you and to grow in you and to become a shining example of your goodness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I uh, believe that you can all hear me. Uh, I'm sorry I came in a bit late. Sometimes there are a whole lot of technical things that uh, uh, come your way. So I'm sorry that I'm, I'm, I'm a few minutes late. But we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Right. Let's. Minister Rose, it's good to see you. <laughs> we bless God. So we've been looking at. I mean, the original thing is rediscovering authentic Christianity. And we, we, one thing that brought us into this whole thing was the fact that too many Christians, instead of walking in the, in, the, in the freedom and in the victory that Jesus Christ has given them, they are still behaving like victims. They are still all over the place crying and praying and, and most of the time, even putting the blame on the devil. Most of the time, Christians of our generation are making it look as though the devil is stronger and more powerful than God. But that is not the case. And the devil is equally not more powerful than the Christian. The devil is not more powerful than the believer. But you see, for the believer to have that power and authority and that victory to an extent where the enemy cannot manipulate him, the believer must walk in the word of God. And too many Christians are oblivious of what the word of God says let alone to obey it let alone to live by it and because of that we end up with so many burdens and so many problems and so we we have moved on down and we have we have uh, uh, lowered it or, or uh, 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 yeah re like reached where we're talking about marriage for example how can we walk as Christians in such a way that the devil will have no authority the devil will have no power in our marriages because so many Christian marriages are suffering so many Christian marriages are struggling and most of the time they blame it on the devil on the devil on the devil no it is not the devil if we will live in the word if we will take the word seriously and walk by it the devil will have no power whatsoever to do anything against our lives and so we we looked first at the ladies but that was done last three weeks we looked at women and their role in making sure that their marriage stands and you see that the woman's role in making sure that the marriage stands is very very simple it is just for her to submit to the man submit to the woman whether 
you you feel you are more intelligent than her and i, I have always said that ma mo many women i have met are extremely intelligent women generally are very very smart okay so you might be smarter than him but your rule is to your, your role is to submit it to submit and to submit means you don't argue with him you don't shout at him you do not disobey him in the lord of course if he is leading you to do something that is against scripture then you have every right to disobey him but in the general things in life which are not against scripture you obey him sometimes you don't obey him but you allow him to do what he thinks is right and then when the consequences come he himself will find out that you were right okay so that is how it works out a woman's role is so simple just submit to your husband but you see that has become extremely difficult in our generation because you cannot submit to nothing like i've said in the past when the man is not standing up as a man when the man is not playing his role as he should it becomes almost impossible to submit because there is almost nothing to submit to when the man wakes up and he's just sitting on the couch he is not working hard to bring anything into the family how do you support him i mean in what way are you going to support him a man who has made himself uh, 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 uh just one of the remote controls he's just sitting on the couch from morning till evening how do you submit to him how do you i mean what is he doing so you submit you see god created the woman as a help meet for the man that means the man must be doing something so that the woman can stand to support if the man is doing nothing there is nothing to support you cannot help someone who is doing nothing and many of our men today are so so lazy they are they are they they, they are so careless they don't have passion they don't have drive they all they want is just food and sex and a little entertainment just get some good clothes to wear and they are okay many men don't have that vision that passion that hunger to achieve great things and so it makes it very very difficult for their women to submit to them and that it is not just that they don't have the passion the man must also live right there are so many things a man must do when he does this it becomes easy for the woman to submit when the man is not doing these things it becomes extremely difficult or almost impossible to submit so let's look at some of the things we talked about concerning men we said that the first thing that a man must learn to do is to grow up too many men out there are not matured enough they may have beard they may be 20 30 40 50 but they are not emotionally matured neither are they spiritually matured you see the maturity we're talking about here is not just biological maturity but we're talking about emotional maturity emotional maturity that you don't let things hurt you so much as a man your wife has done something and three days you are sitting there you are not talking you are not emotionally mature you are sulking you, you, you won't talk you won't eat you won't do anything and you are just sitting there that you are not emotionally mature, emotionally mature okay so we're looking at emotional maturity a man who gets angry and slams doors who gets angry and and lifts his hand to hit his wife that's emotionally immature a man who gets angry and goes to look for another woman to sleep with that is emotionally immature you are not matured emotionally bless you man of god pastor samuel <coughs> you are not emotionally mature so when you you feel that you don't you're not having your way with your wife then the next thing is to just do something that you think you can do to hurt her a man who tries to do things to hurt his wife is not emotionally mature but my wife has done this i'm going to pay her back it's not emotionally mature so my wife didn't cook the food so me too i will not empty the bin so that no 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 you are not emotionally mature you see when you are emotionally mature the things you do are not determined by what your wife does you are mature you are independent in your thoughts you walk according to the word of god not according to the behavior of your wife so a man who is mature is, is emotionally mature he's also matured in such a way that he is not controlled by his family his mother, his father, his aunties, cousins don't control such a man. There are so many of our husbands in our generation who are controlled by men, controlled by family members, aunties, sisters, cousins, and 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 to an extent that even when they have to do uh, 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 make important decisions, instead of discussing it with their wives, they will have to look for a distant relative somewhere, a, a relative who is not with them there, to discuss it. And until that relative gets 
gives a go ahead that decision is not going to go on i have heard of men who will make decisions with their wives okay we are going to do this and then the man will say that i need to discuss this with my unless my uncle or my auntie approves it unless my sister approves it unless my mother or my father approves it we are not doing it you are still a baby in pampas you may be grown but i'm telling you in emotion in the emotions you still have pampas on. you are not intellectually mature because the bible says that therefore shall a man a matured male leave his mother and father disconnect himself from their domain disconnect himself from their influence and then join himself to his wife and then the two shall become one so if you are married as a man and, and, and look look let, let me just put this here you know that the bible never said that the woman will leave her family the Bible never said that the woman that the woman will leave the mother and father and join herself to the, the man. But it rather says the man. So the woman can be immature, the marriage can still work. The woman may be influenced and controlled by which is not good. But I mean, I'm not trying to say that that is right. That is also not good. But even when the woman is under any form of control from friends, from family, or whatever, it is not as dangerous as when the man is rather under the control of such people because the man is supposed to be the leader of the family the man is supposed to be the father he's supposed to be the driving force of the new family that has been formed if he is being controlled by other people there is no future for that marriage many marriages break down because the husband has external influence coming in to disturb at the marriage bless you my brother i'll, I'll be in touch you i haven't forgotten about you <laughs> hallelujah so it's extremely important that a man is emotionally matured the man is uh, 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 intellectually matured and the man is spiritually matured i'll go into the details of that uh, in today's broadcaster the man is spiritually matured it's extremely important that a man is in this thing because when you are not mature you do silly things that opens doors too many men have gone out there to sleep with other women because my wife didn't give me sex because my wife is annoying me because you are not mature that's why you went out to do that and then once you go do that you open up a case and then you both suffer even if you don't go out to do anything if you are not behaving right as a man and that causes your wife not to be able to submit to you it opens the hedge of protection and cases begin to come in and you will both suffer because of your immaturity men you have a lot of responsibility in the marriage whether the marriage stands or fails it depends on the man i know there is a common saying that it takes two to tango but look in every organization you look at even in in football especially in european football right every time a team is not doing well they don't fire the players who do they fire they fire the manager or the coach you are the one who have chosen the players. That is why the Bible says that it is the man who goes to choose the wife. It's not, it's not a, he who finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the, 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 the Lord. It is not the woman who goes to choose the man. It is the man who goes to choose the woman. And so stop putting that blame on your wife that the marriage broke down because of your wife. If the marriage broke down because of your wife, it is your fault. It means that you chose the wrong players. Players do not get fired when a team loses. It is the manager who gets fired. And you, the husband, you are the start of that new family. You are the manager. Everything that is not going well in that family is your fault. If your wife is not behaving well, it is your responsibility to teach her. And for and you say, if I teach her, she will not listen. She will not listen because you have not secured her respect for you if you are misbehaving your wife will not respect you enough to listen to you so if you want a wife that you can teach you have to set an example in such a way that the woman will stand in awe of you do you see why we receive the teachings of jesus christ it's because jesus christ has set a sacrificial example that we stand in awe of him we worship him the bible says the submission that literally the submission that it says wives must submit to their husband it literally means worshiping because you see he gives an example that wives submit to your husbands even as the church submits to christ what does the church does to christ uh, what does the church do to christ the church submits to christ the church worships christ the church obeys christ that is exactly what the wife is supposed to do the wife must worship and obey but she cannot obey when she cannot worship you and look the worship of jesus christ jesus christ why do we even worship him. He did not come to impose himself to be worshipped. He himself actually said that the son has not come to serve, but to be served. Uh, uh, to be served, but to serve. You see, he he laid down his life. 
He sacrificed so much that Jesus Christ did not come and impose himself as God. We looked at his life. We looked at his power. We looked at his sacrifice. We looked at his teachings. We looked at his behavior. We said, no, this is God. How he could lay down his life and die for us. That is why, you see, Thomas, Thomas, when Jesus resurrected, Thomas said, I will not believe in him unless I have seen him because when Jesus came, he was not there. Okay. He said, unless I have seen him and I have touched him, I will never believe. And then when he saw Jesus and he touched and he felt, Thomas bowed and said that, my Lord and my God. You see, when, because of what Jesus did, our worship for him flows naturally. Nobody forces us to worship him. We worship him naturally because of his example, because of his power, because of his sacrifice. But you are a husband. You don't sacrifice for your wife and you are surprised she cannot obey you. Live like Christ and just as the church submits to Christ. If you also live like Christ in that family, your wife will naturally submit to you. You will not need to insist that she submit to you. Look, there is no woman in this world who is so evil that when you lay down your life for her, she will still say, I will not take it. And if there is any such woman, then it is your fault that you went to marry such a woman. That means you yourself, you were not matured enough. You should have seen the type of woman she was before she married you, before you married her once you've gone to marry her then you take responsibility for what she is you see this even comes once again to to the immaturity we talk about you see a woman you don't take time to know who she is because you are eager for sex you are eager 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 you don't study her character you don't know whether she's somebody you can leave and then you just go and marry her and then when she comes and she's not listening to you you put the blame on her the blame is not hers the blame is yours that you couldn't wait that you were not designing that that you could not hear from God, that you could not control yourself and, and, and choose wisely. So no matter the situation of the family, my brother, it is your fault. If the marriage is doing well, you are doing well. If the marriage is not doing well, you the man, you are not doing well. When Adam and Eve messed up, when God came down, he did not put the blame on Eve. God is all-knowing. God is all-knowing. Do you think God did not see it when Eve had if if succumbed to the temptation from from the devil and when Eve passed on the temptation to adam you think god did not see it god saw it but when god came who did he ask first he asked adam he asked adam why because he's the head of that family he has the responsibility if things do not go well whether it is your wife's fault or not my brother it is your fault it is because of you that your wife has behaved like that why do i say this god gave the instruction first to adam Adam, there is no way in the Bible that says that Adam directly taught Eve as to how they must live. Adam did not pass the instructions on to Eve. You see, they were both not naked when Eve ate the fruit at first. It is not recorded in the Bible. Eve, the family did not go naked when Eve ate the fruit. Eve did not go naked. Adam did not go naked when Eve ate the fruit. They became naked after the man had eaten of the fruit. Then they all became naked. Because you, the man, you are the covering of that family. It is when you mess up that the family messes up. When you stand strong, you cover your wife. Even when your wife is failing, that marriage will stand. Because you are the priest of the house. You are the one who stands before the master. You are the one who is responsible for, for the well-being of the family so never blame your wife when the family fails it is your fault as the man take responsibility and then we also know right there in the same genesis 3 that when god asked adam what have you done you see an irresponsible man and that is what our generation is still doing today when he asked adam have you eaten of the fruit that i told you not to eat of it the first he said that it is the woman that you gave me blame blame putting blame on the woman is the woman that you gave me as for me it's not my fault first question did you teach her that that is not god did not ask eve have you eaten of the fruit i told you because god did not give that instruction to eve god gave the instruction to adam so he asked adam instead of adam owning up to say that i failed to teach her 
I failed to set example. I failed to teach her. That is why she went to eat it. And even after she ate it, I could still have stood to say, I am not eating this. God says we must not eat it. The family will still have stood. But he succumbed to the temptation. So when your wife is misbehaving, it doesn't mean you must also come down to her level. Your wife may be angry. She may be talking, talking, talking. It doesn't mean you also come down to her level. You begin to argue with her or hit her or, 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 or go out to find another woman to prove that you are a man. No, when you do that, you open up the door. God is counting on you, man. God is counting on you, my brother. Never blame your wife for anything that goes wrong. If your wife is chasing friends out there, it's because you are not being a good friend enough to her. It's because you are not comforting enough. You are not giving her a shoulder to lean on. That is, look, if you like, give your wife attention. If you like, love your wife. If you like, promote her the way you are supposed to. And she will ditch all those friends. You complain your wife is always on Facebook. It's because you are not interesting enough. You are a boring husband. You are only interested in yourself. You are interested in your own entertainment. You are interested in football, TV, playing computer games. It amazes me there are even husbands who play computer games. I mean, husband do you know what it means to be a husband a husband is like the curator the one who dresses the one who works on the thing you are a husband you are supposed to beautify and glorify your wife both in her body in her spirit in her mind in her emotions we abandon our wives like nothing and you are a man you are there playing computer game and when your wife is out there chasing unnecessary things then you are angry you are always with friends you are always sitting on facebook where should she go where was the last time you sat down with your wife to chat with her what was the last time you took your wife out to the movies what was the last time you sat down even at home let us watch a movie of your choice together what was the last time you went for a stroll with your wife what was the last time you put your wife on your back what was the last time you let your wife just just lay on you just to comfort her What's the last time you cooked for your wife? What's the last time you took your wife to a restaurant? What's the last time you scrubbed your wife's back? What's the last time you arranged your wife's wardrobe for her? Where's the last time? What's the last time? You are a wicked husband and you are surprised she cannot follow you. She cannot obey you. When you behave like that as a man, my brother, you are the reason why that marriage is not working. And you are immature. You are immature. So maturity is extremely important so we do not open the door for the enemy to come into our marriages we said that the, now after you have shown your maturity when you are mature enough to handle a marriage now your ultimate instruction is to love your wife is to love your wife the bible says that christ loved the church and he gave himself he died for the wife now if you are a good man who truly loves your wife you would die for your wife and I don't want to go too much into this because there are new things to come today. You die for your wife. What does it mean to die for your wife? You, the man, will not sit down and ask your wife to go and work when you are not working. Unless for health reasons, you, you are the, the number one laborer for the house. You should be the one who must work. And I said last week that no job is below your standard. If You, you see, what is below your standard is that you come home empty-handed. What is below your standard is that you sit on the couch, not bringing in any income. That is what is below your standard. But no matter how educated you are, so far as you have two hands and two legs, if you are not getting a job that is commensurate to your level of education, still find something to do. Whether it is cleaning, washing of hands, uh, washing of cars, farming, whatever it is, you do it. You see, you must be able to bring in some income legally into that family no matter what the situation is you never sit down and say well it's below my level i won't do it it is rather below your level for your wife to go and where to come and feed you that is actually what is below your level not that you, you you find a job that is below your qualifications when your wife has to work and feed you pay the rent pay the bills and then you still have sex with her and you expect her to submit to you that is where the problem is that is what is below your level not when you do a job that is below your academic qualifications okay so let us understand that you must be sacrificial you must be the one who all let your wife always have the first choice let your wife feel comforted and comfortable in her life i i spoke a lot about that so i don't want to go so much into into detail today i want to continue by saying that the, the a true husband is the spiritual priest of the home when you are the husband well and ladies please invite invite if you're on invite your friends and loved ones and especially your husbands 
if you know any man invite them in your church friends everybody invite invite men to come and listen to this because the marriages that are failing especially in the body of christ is the fault of the men men are not standing up to their responsibility let invite the men let them come in share this video as much as you can let as many people see it so we can save as many marriages as we can save all right a true husband is the spiritual priest as well as the wellspring of wisdom and knowledge for his wife a true husband is the spiritual priest as well as the wellspring of wisdom and knowledge for his wife so number one you are the pastor of the house every husband you are a pastor now you look at how you are living whether you would attend a church if the pastor behaved like the way you behave in the house that is where your wife is vindicated the way you behaved in that house if that is how your pastor behaved at church would you still go to that church you ask yourself the way you talk to your wife if your fa if your pastor talked to you like that would you still go to that that, that church you see you the husband you are the pastor of that house so you behave like the pastor you are the priest there is an anointing over your head for the leading of that family and if you fail to handle that anointing properly the lord will require it of you the lord will require it of you you are the pastor now i, I am a pastor what is the role of a pastor what is the role of a pastor i may not need to go there but if you look at uh Acts chapter uh, 6 verse 4 he said that it, it came to a point where the disciples were multiplied were multiplied so much that the, uh, some of the people were not getting enough of the provisions and so uh, 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 Paul no I said Paul sorry uh, Peter and the rest said that let us look for people full of the Holy Ghost that is the help meet right let's look for people full of wisdom full of Holy Ghost these are the things you look for when you are going to marry a woman look for a woman full of wisdom full of the Holy Ghost and of good character that is what they look for you don't look for a woman full of wisdom full of Holy Ghost you look for a woman with big buttocks and then when she comes and she cannot follow you you are complaining it's your fault handle it Handle it. It's your fault. It's your fault. I don't mean it's bad to have a woman with big buttocks. But first, look for her wisdom. Make sure she has wisdom before you look at the body. It's not about the skin color. It's not about the shape. It's about the wisdom first. It's about the wisdom first. Look, how long does it take to have sex? You are not going to be having sex with her 24-7. Don't look at a woman just because of the sex. Look for her wisdom. God did not say, I will make you a sex mate. He says, I will make you a help mate. Your life is more important than sex. Don't look at, don't choose a woman based on her sexual whatever. Look for a woman based on her wisdom, her character, and the anointing of God upon her life. Okay, that's just a little digression. So, Acts 6 4. He said that therefore you look for somebody who is let's look for people who are more filled with the holy spirit full of wisdom and who have good character who will help us with the work that is that is the way but we will give ourselves continually look at what the pastor said we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word pastor husband your number one job apart from even providing for your wife if you really love your wife and children is to be prayerful it says we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word one thing that breaks my heart is that for most a lot of families that i know the man is spiritually dead you are a husband you don't pray you don't go to church and you expect that marriage to work you are a husband your commitment to the things of God are so low and then you rather wake up to blame your wife you are always at church you are always at church where should she be she's always at church because you are not manifesting Christ to her it should rather be the other way around you the man should be the one who is always at church so that your wife will be so today spend some time with me but you are backsliding you are a carnal husband you don't care about the things of God and your wife knows that if she follows you her destiny will be destroyed your wife knows husband the way you are living that if she follows you she may end up in hell so she decides to serve god and then you rather get offended hey you are always in church i have been heard once where husband said oh you have to choose between me and church really did you say that did you die on the cross for her the fact that you have married her doesn't mean she's your property your wife is not 
your property. She also has brains to make some choices for herself. Her eternity, dear husband, you cannot choose the eternity. You cannot choose the eternal path of your wife uh, for your wife. If your wife wants to go to heaven, you can't force her to go to hell. But the what the right thing that you must learn to do, rather as a husband, is to be rather spiritual. You, the husband, should be the one who is praying. Look, I I, I cannot tell you how a wife feels when she wakes up in the night and can hear her husband praying. Several times my wife has passed comments indirectly for me to know how she is touched when she hears. One of these days, uh, not long ago, we traveled somewhere. And uh, usually when we are home, by God's grace, we have space. And so in the night, I'm able to get out, come to my study. This is my study. Either come to my study, go to my hall. I mean, there are so many places in my house I can pray. So she doesn't always see me praying at home because I have a place to pray. But this time, we were in a hotel and we were in the same room. Just myself and her were in the same room. And then in the night, as I had to do, I woke up to pray. And in the morning, she was saying, she said, wow, I, I, I got up this night and I, I, I could hear you firing. You see, she felt proud that her husband was praying. When was the last time you prayed? Your wife is eager for spiritual protection in that family. A prayerless husband, you send fear and panic into that home. When you are not praying, it means the priest is not working. For example, if there is a church, you go to a church and the pastor never prays. How would you feel? A church where the pastor doesn't pray, the pastor doesn't pray will collapse. In the same way, a family where the husband is prayerless will eventually fall through. It will fail. It will collapse. So if you are a husband and you are prayerless, you are you are I, I don't want to use the word a curse but you are becoming a curse onto that family because you are allowing the devil to sit on that family you see flies do not sit on on hot food when the food is hot flies cannot sit on it when it gets cold then they can sit on it so as a husband when you are not praying you literally bring coldness and the spiritual coldness or coldness into the spiritual atmosphere of the family and demons can easily come in you are surprised you are arguing so much the time you are supposed to use to pray that's what you are using to argue with your wife so pray if your husband it is your responsibility to pray and to study the word and to teach your wife no you know there is a scripture that many people have even twisted when paul said that i suffer not a woman to, to speak in the church and because of that people have said hey women should not teach who told you that women should not preach who told you that read all the new testament you'll find so many women who served god who did the work of god who preached the word of god so don't tell me that women have no right to preach that's not what i'm going on today they, they, they don't have right to preach but when they give you money that one you will take if you don't want a woman to preach the word, don't take a woman's food. Don't take a woman's money. You take a woman's money and you tell me that she has no right to teach. That is not even, even what, 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 what I was trying to say. But what I'm saying is that... <coughs> come on, I've, I've lost my, 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 my trail of thought. But let me, let me come back. As, as a husband, you are the pastor of the house. When you don't pray, when you don't pray, you allow, you open doors for demonic infestation to come in there so it is your job to pray not only to pray but also to know the word and teach your wife i was saying that paul said i suffer not a woman to teach why because if you go on further he is saying that because if they have any questions they should ask their husbands so from that paul is even trying to indicate that husbands should be pastors in the home husbands should be the ones who teach their wives even first before they come out but the fact that the husband must teach his wife at home doesn't mean that the wife cannot become a pastor. That is a total uh, 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 misrepresentation of what the scripture means. But you see, many husbands are letting down their wives. Why? Because they cannot teach their wives. You don't teach. When was the last time you opened up your Bible and taught your wife? When was the last time you opened up the Bible to, 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 to teach your wife? You don't teach. You don't know the Bible. You are a husband. You don't know the Bible. You will fail. You must be able to teach your wife. You should be able to be the one who opens the scriptures to your wife. If you are a husband and you have not been doing this, that I'm telling you, it is time. You must start. You must start doing that now. You should be the one teaching your wife. And I know some husband will put his hand, his hand on his hand. Hey, I don't know anything. That is where the problem is. You have already failed. A husband should be spiritually matured. A husband must know the word of God. So how are you going to lead that family? You see how men are, are, are falling short 
you don't know the Bible, you cannot teach your wife, you cannot teach your children at home. If you cannot teach the scriptures at home, you are a problem in that family as a husband. Let's go to Ephesians 5 26. Ephesians 5 26. It says, you know, we've looked at the 25. Maybe when we start from 25, it will, it will make sense. Uh, 25 says that. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. Then the verse 26 says that, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Okay? So, Christ's word is what is used to keep the church sanctified the blood of jesus has sanctified and saved us but for us to walk in sanctification it is by your word it is by his word you see that jesus himself prayed he said that sanctify them by your word that, sanctify them by by, by that truth thy word is truth okay so it is the word that sanctifies every time you study the word every time you read the word every time you listen to the word it's like you are standing in the shower and you are washing you are being sanctified you are cleansing and he says that christ teaches the church by christ sanctifies the church by teaching us his word and in the same way the husband sanctifies his wife by teaching her the word when was the last time you sanctified your wife you are a husband you have never sanctified your wife you never teach her the word and when she is going to where she will be taught to you are complaining that you are always in church have you married the church you you, you have a problem as a husband if you were teaching your wife enough scripture at home maybe it will be measured if you were teaching your wife enough at home she will not be chasing pastors and sometimes some of you you are you are you are arguing and you are chasing prophets and sometimes your wives go chase prophets and some pro i don't mean every prophet please don't 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 misunderstand me they go chase some fake prophets and false fake prophets sleep with them husband let me tell you some of you your wives are sleeping with fake prophets why because you have shared your responsibility you have failed to teach your wife the scriptures at home you have failed to become a prophet. You have failed to become a pastor to the family. That's why your wife is chasing other prophets. If you could also stand, become a man of prayer, become a man of the word, your, word, your, your wife will be stable enough not to be chasing any nonsense that comes up. Yeah. Man, if you are there, let me hear from you. If you are there, let me hear from you. You are not practicing what you're supposed to practice you are not being the prophet of the home so when you are not a prophet your wife will go and chase other prophets don't get offended it's because you have shared your responsibility it's because you've shared your responsibility the husband must sanctify his wife and cleanse her by the washing of water by the word by the word teach your wife and i don't mean false doctrines teach your wife the true word of god and you cannot teach your wife the true word of God when you are not living it. When you are not living it. Why do we follow the word of Christ? We follow the word of Christ because of his love. If you have not shown enough love to your wife, you can never teach her. You don't have the right to teach your wife the scriptures when you have not shown her. Christ gained, you have not shown her love. Christ gained the right to give us his word because he first laid down his life. When did you lay down your life for your wife? Do you show your wife enough love, enough for her to take your word seriously? The condition of your heart shows how she must value the word that you teach her. So you must be well versed in the Bible. If you are a husband, you must be well versed in the Bible. You must know the scriptures, otherwise your marriage will fail your, or your marriage will suffer. And it's not only knowing the scriptures number two you must also be prayerful as a husband you must be prayerful as a husband i've told you that the husband is the priest of the family right now if the husband is the priest of the family let's go to first samuel chapter 12 verse 23 first samuel chapter 12 verse 23 the husband is the priest of the family the husband is the prophet of the family right the husband is the priest the husband is the prophet of the family first samuel chapter 12 verse 23 what does samuel say there samuel says Moreover, as for me, God forbid. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord 
in ceasing to pray for you but i will teach you the good and the right way samuel the prophet the priest of the people says that god forbid as for me god forbid that i should sin against the lord by not praying and by not teaching the word and not just praying but also not praying for you so husband if you are the priest of the family you should be praying for your wife constantly when was the last time you prayed for your wife when was the last time you prayed for your wife in secret when was the last time you laid hands on your wife physically to pray for her you see so many husbands are not playing their roles as the priest of that family that is why our marriages are struggling you are a runaway pastor when the pastor runs away the church will fail in the same way when you are there even physically and you have run away you are not playing your role as a husband the marriage will fail husbands let your wife see you praying get up in prayer one hour two hours three hours husband you are praying because you have a responsibility your responsibility is that the marriage must do well the family must thrive it rests on your shoulders you are sitting there watching tv playing computer game as a husband and you say your husband doesn't submit to you your husband does not respect you you are playing computer games you are playing games with friends on 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 on, on computer or on tv you never pray you don't read your bible you don't teach you don't take your children to church you don't take your your family to the things of god and you are surprised that your family is breaking down you sin as a husband when you don't pray you sin as a husband when you don't pray you sin as a husband when you don't pray for your wife. You sin as a husband when you don't stand in prayer for your wife. You sin as a husband when you don't teach your wife the right way. I don't mean arguing with her. When you don't teach your wife the right way, you are sinning. And how would you know the right way? How can you even teach her the right way when you are not living it? When you are a husband and you are not living the right way, how can you teach her? And you are surprised. Women of today, women of today, look. The women of today are the same women of yesterday. Women of today have become women of today because of the men of today. Irresponsible men. Irresponsible men in our generation. Our irresponsibility is what has rendered our women like that. We are not, we are not taking our responsibility seriously. We are pushing our wives. Our wives are suffering mentally. They are suffering emotionally. They are suffering physically. Your wife is doing two jobs when you are sitting at home watching TV. And you expect her to come and submit to you and treat you as her lord. It won't work. It won't work. We are abusing women in our generation and it must stop. It must stop. Too much abuse. Too much abuse of our women. Too much abuse of our women. Go to the average home. The wife works so many times more than the man she go out and work like the man come home she must she's the one who must cook she's the one who must wash the dishes she's the one who must uh, make sure the house is clean she's the one who must lie down and get ready for you to come and have sex with she's the one who must carry the pregnancy she's the one who must give birth to the child she's the one who must take care of the baby all throughout what are you doing as a man nothing and you are surprised when she, her voice rises up against you Play your role well and your wife will submit. Rise up as a man. Be a strong man. Be a sacrificial man. Be a loving man. Be a spiritual man. And your wife will submit. Be a spiritual man. And your wife will submit. When you fail to be prayerful. When you fail to pray for your wife. You are an evil husband. You are sinning. Another thing I want us to look at as husbands. <laughs> is secrecy. Secrecy. Avoid being secretive with your wife one of the reasons why many marriages struggle many men are keeping too many things from their wives both good and bad you go you fell short you have slept with somebody out there when you come the first person you confess to is god even before you get home and i'm not saying that go and do that i'm saying that let's say by accident something like that has happened you have done something out there like you confess to God. But when you get to the first thing, you go on your knees and say, my wife, I have sinned against you. Forgive me. This is what I have done. You don't keep it a secret from your wife until the thing shows up five years later. And when your wife is mad, you are surprised why she should be mad. Because you kept it from her. Look, every wife is 
sensitive and emotional enough that when you go wrong and you admit your fault, there are some men who have never said sorry to their wives. Never said sorry. Because I'm the man. I am the man. You think it just takes a male organ to be a man. You've never said sorry to your wife. You do silly things you never say sorry to your wife. That is wrong. A, a real man, a matured man, is one who is able to say, my wife, I miss this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So don't keep secret from your wife. When you mess up, confess to your wife, first thing. Not just that. Every business transaction that you involve yourself in, your wife must know about it. Why? Because when the thing fails, eventually she is the one you will come to. When the thing fails, eventually she's the one you'll come to. But many men keep this in from, if I don't want my wife to know I have this money, I don't want my wife to know I have this money, really. There's another dangerous thing. If you are a husband, you keep your PIN number and your password from your wife. You keep your bank PIN number from your wife. You keep your computer password and other passwords from your wife. You are a wicked husband. If you are a husband who keeps your PIN numbers and your passwords from your wife, you are a wicked husband. You are very evil. You don't deserve to be a husband. You are wicked. You are wicked. Genesis 2.25. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. They were naked. That means there was nothing they were hiding from each other so far as they were under the glory of God this thing happened before the sin came okay it is because of your sinful heart that you are afraid for your wife to know your password and your pin numbers because you are using your Facebook account to do fornication to chase girls because you are using your email <laughs> let me read this one that is some some even want their wives to pop champagne for them when they go wrong. <laughs> oh, God, may God help our, our, our wives. May God help our wives. Too many wives are enduring too much nonsense from men. Too, because uh, they, they say, if, if he leaves you, you will not find another man. If, if, if he leaves you, you will not find another man. You are growing. So it doesn't matter. Stay there like that. Stay there like that. And blockheaded men are taking advantage of it. There are more, more women than men. So I, I'll do what I like. If he leaves me, I can get. If she leaves me, I can get another woman. Really? You may get another woman, but you may never get your original life. You may get another woman, but your life will never be the same. You may you will never. Your life will never be the same. They were both naked and they were not ashamed. Why? Because they were under the glory of God. When sin came, immediately they became conscious of their nakedness and they went to sow things to cover themselves. You are keeping your PIN number and your password from your wife because of your evil intentions. If you are doing nothing wrong, you will never be afraid for your wife to know all your passwords and your PIN numbers. Some of you, your wife do not even know how much money you earn. Your wife has never seen your paycheck. Your wife does not have access to your bank account. Hey, if you are a husband and you are like that, one day you will wake up and you find yourself that you cannot move. <laughs> you cannot move. And you need money or you need something. And then now you have to tell your wife, uh, can you please get something from here? And now she doesn't know your bank account. She doesn't know your, your PIN number. That is where you see how foolish you have been. Every husband who keeps his PIN numbers and passwords away from his wife is wicked, is evil, and is not wise. I don't want to use the word foolish. It's not wise. Because when you find yourself in an emergency, you will see that you cannot be helped. God forbid, you go out there and you die. What happens? How do they get access to all these things? That's why people die and their properties end up in other people's fam uh, 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 hands. Because they, 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 your own wife that you stay in that home with, your own wife you've been having sex with, you've been doing all sorts of things with, your own wife who is laboring to put food on your table, you are building a house, your wife doesn't know about it. 
You have bought a car. You are running it as a commercial vehicle. Your wife doesn't know about it. You have investments. Your wife doesn't know about it. You, your wife doesn't know your PIN number. Doesn't know your password. And you are using your email to do wicked things. Your day will come. Your day will come. Your day will come. You've got to be open. You've got to be open. You don't keep secrets in marriage. Anybody who keeps secrets in marriage is wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. If you can open yourself up to go naked and have sex with the person, what else is there that she must not know? Eh? You know, women, this is a woman. You know, women, you don't show them everything, but you show her your penis. You show her your penis, but you can't show her everything. There's something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. Avoid secrecy. Let your wife know your paycheck. Let your wife know your password. Let your wife know your PIN number. If you don't do that, you are inviting trouble in that marriage. You are creating a situation where the devil can come into that marriage. Some trust their, their friends more than they do trust their wives. It's true. I mentioned that earlier. It's true. You trust friends. The decision that needs to be made, you rather, you rather depend on your friends instead of your wife. You are a sick husband. There's something wrong with your head. Your wife should be your number one friend. Your wife should be your number one confidant. Don't forget, the likelihood that you would die in anybody's arm, I mean, the, the, the likelihood that you die in your wife's arm is, arms is higher than you dying in any other person's arms. So why do you want to keep anything from her? Why do you want to keep anything from her? When you die, she's the one who must pick up all the trash. She's the one who must organize everything and reorganize everything. So why? Why would you want to keep anything from her? Wicked husband. Wicked husband. Genesis 3, 8 to 11. Genesis 3, 8 to 11. One of the reasons why, I've already said it, the reason why you are afraid for your wife to know your password and your details and all that is because you are wicked. It's because you don't have good intentions. It's because there is sin in your life. In Genesis 3, 8 to 11, it says that, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and, uh, Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you seen? Have you eaten what I told you not to eat? So you are afraid for your wife to know your back password and your details and your investments and your pin numbers and whatnot because of the sin you are hiding because of sin some of you your wife doesn't even know your phone pin your phone password on your phone some of you the password on your phone is more than world bank safe nobody can crack it your wife does not know the password on your phone why because you know the things you are using your phone to do if you are a good husband both you and your wife will use the same password you will show your wife your password so that she can access your phone anytime because you are wicked you hide your password and you say eh, wives of today their mouth is too loud their mouth is too loud these are the things men are doing that is why they are, they, their mouths are too loud the men are not playing their roles men are not being responsible that's why they are, they, the women are also revolting genesis 3 11 to 12. another thing i want you to learn is to take responsibility when you go wrong if you are a good husband take responsibility when you go wrong i mentioned that partially uh, earlier on many husbands like i said like uh, you you never say sorry whenever you are wrong you will find a way and twist that thing until it becomes your wife's fault you are never wrong he says and he said who told you that you were naked have you eaten of the fruit I commanded you that you should not eat? God is talking to Adam directly here. You think God did not see Eve. God saw Eve. God was still talking to Adam directly here. Because he gave the commandment to Adam. He says, don't eat it. And so he asked Adam, well, who told you you're naked? Have you eaten it? Let's look at what Adam says. The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat this answer has got nothing to do with the question god is asking you have you eaten of the fruit it is either a yes or a no god gave you the instruction he didn't give the woman instruction never to give you a fruit 
He gave you the man the instruction. So if he says don't eat it, you don't eat it. And as a man, when you go wrong or when things go wrong, not only when you go wrong, when things go wrong in the family, learn to take responsibility as a man. Take responsibility. When things go wrong, rise up and say, listen, it's my fault. I think I missed it. I think I messed up. Forgive me. Even when your wife goes wrong sometimes, rise up and take that responsibility because she is your responsibility. She's your word as well. It's like when your child goes to school and your child goes to misbehave in school, when you go and they tell you your child has misbehaved, you don't just blame the child that it's the child's fault. After you have disciplined the child, you also say, you are tell the teacher, I am sorry that this has happened. You, the parent, you take responsibility also for it. In the same way, if you are a husband, even when your wife goes wrong, you take responsibility. Look, I have seen instances where a wife has gone to mess up in town and the husband comes and instead of the husband trying to help the wife a little, the husband rather joins the people outside to put the wife down. That's how she is. That's how she is. She never listens. She's a foolish woman. Husband, you are supporting outsiders to destroy your wife. That shows the level of wisdom you have. As a husband, when your wife even makes a mistake in town, you try to cover her. You try to shield her. Oh, maybe today she's not, she's not feeling well. Maybe she's not in the right mood. That is why this has happened. You don't expose your wife's weaknesses in public. You don't expose your wife to outsiders to destroy her. No. You cover her. You defend her. You protect her. Don't forget, you are supposed to love her. You are supposed to protect her. You don't expose your wife to your family members. Husband, your wife has done, made a mistake. You call your mother. You call your aunties. And then they are coming to fight your wife. Oh boy, you are a child. You are a child as a husband. You're, you have a problem with your wife. And you are calling for backup. You are calling for backup from your family members that they should come and beat your wife or come and insult your wife. Your wife makes mistake. You are broadcasting it everywhere. My wife is like this. My wife is like that. My wife is like so that everybody can put her down. You call people, complain about your wife as a husband. Complain to your friends about your wife. Complain to your pastor about your wife. Complain to family members about your wife. Some even put it on Facebook, make it their Facebook profile, uh, Facebook or whatever. That thing, what do they call it? Posting about your wife. No! No! Where's the love? Where's the maturity? You are supposed to cover. You are supposed to cover her, not expose her. Not expose her. Unless you are a wicked husband. Hallelujah. Adam could not cover his wife. He exposed her so easily. Oh, it's not me. It's the woman you gave me. No. If even it was the woman, you don't give the app like that. So can you imagine if at this point, God had not acted right and God had just raised his hand and killed Eve. Eve would have died because of Adam's bad leadership. When you fail to cover your wife and you expose her and she goes through any difficulty, it's because of your bad leadership. You are a wicked man. You are a wicked man. Never expose your wife. When your wife cooks and the food is no good, you don't go and invite her outside. Come and eat. You see what I've been telling you? Come and see. See, this is what I've always been saying. She doesn't know how to cook. If you know your wife doesn't know how to cook, take your friends to a restaurant. Order food before they come. Don't expose your wife's weaknesses. Everybody has weakness. There's no woman who doesn't have weakness. You see, a shallow-minded man thinks that when he disgraces his wife, or when he increases the, he, he exposes the weaknesses of his wife, that it can give him good ground to get another woman who is better. There's no woman who has no shortfall. Every woman has short, short, some shortfall. Some don't know how to cook, but they have long hair. Some have bald hair, but they have beautiful face. Some have ugly face, but they have nice legs. Some have nice legs. By all means, you may find something. Some are very intelligent, but they are short. So, <laughs> I know someone's going to beat me after this broadcast. Some are very intelligent, but they are short. 
some are tall but they don't have enough intelligence whatever it is you may find some you may find something wrong just as you the husband you see one sad thing is that men are easily looking at the shortcoming of their wives forgetting that they also have shortcomings you the man who are trying to put your wife down you yourself you too you have a thousand and one problems with you focus on your own problem remove the log in your eye so that you can see well to remove the little speck in your wife's eyes don't expose your wife's weaknesses don't expose your wife's weaknesses i don't know if if i've spoken enough do you have enough time for me to go on a little or you, you i can end here i can end here and do a part two a part three or whatever part next week right the next thing possibly is prioritize her strength and comfort above yours prioritize your wife's comfort and strength above yours the strength adam said something when god brought eve to adam the first thing adam said was that bone of my bones flesh of my flesh there is a spiritual meaning to that scripture bone of my bone flesh of my flesh what that means is strength of my strength and comfort of my comfort you see the body gives you comfort when you embrace the bones in the body gives us strength that's what helps us to stand or to like it gives us structure okay and the flesh is what gives us comfort now when adam says bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh listen very very carefully here what he's saying is that when my wife is strong that is when i am strong when my wife is comfortable that is actually when i am comfortable bone of my bone strength of my strength flesh of my flesh comfort of my comfort do you know as a husband unless you have a mental problem when your wife is not comfortable you are never comfortable unless you have a mental problem some husbands have a problem when there is no peace for your wife a true man can never have peace so seek to strengthen your wife let your wife be strong don't drain her most of us men we overwork our wives and they are so tired and so weak they can't enjoy life look there are many of you men your wife was enjoying life far better before she married you the bible says two is better than one and they have the good reward for their work but your wife has regretted marrying you some of you men ever since your wife married you she hasn't enjoyed life she had a better life before she married you and she has constantly been saying if i had known if i had known i wouldn't have married you but she hasn't been bold enough to tell you she has not been bold enough to tell you but if you will be a man your ability to go out and prove that you are a man is when your wife is standing out there saying i am glad to be married to this man then you can go out to say you are a man you have no right to say you are a man when your wife is crying when your wife is weeping when your wife is moaning when your wife is dissatisfied when your wife is unhappy when your wife is suffering you don't go and say you are a man the proof of your manhood is in the comfort of your wife the fruit of your the proof of your manhood is in the serenity and 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 then the, 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 i'm looking for a better word it's not coming it's in the yeah serenity is not the best way but let me use it of your wife right when your wife is at peace when your wife is relaxed when your wife is happy when your wife has hope that is when you have become a man that is when you are a man when your wife is satisfied when your wife can go to bed and sleep happily when your wife can relax when your wife can tell friends i'm glad oh my husband is such a blessing when your wife can call her mother and say mom i'm so grateful for this man god has given me then you are a man when your wife can publicly declare that you are a good man then you are a good man it is not you who go about saying you are a man the proof of your manhood is in the praise of your wife when your wife is praising you not being coerced to do so but is praising you out of her own volition then you have become a man the lord caused a to fall upon adam 
and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh inside the rough and the rib which the Lord God had taken out of the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and Adam said now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man what comfort are you yeah tranquility thank you that's the word I was looking for tranquility tranquility thank you yeah so I told you the women are smarter you see <laughs> I told the women are smarter the tranquility of your wife the peace and the tranquility that your wife enjoys is what shows that you are a man you, when you are a man we meet your wife she's all over the place she can't even have time to do her hair she's always confused and frustrated you are a wicked man that's why your wife is like that a good man has a woman who is relaxed comfortable because she has been helped at home she's been helped mentally she's been encouraged constantly she's been made to know her worth some of you husbands your wife don't even if it were not because they themselves they had their life before they married you they may think they are useless women because you have turned them into useless women because of your wickedness your laziness and your carelessness as a husband it's time to wake up man it's time to wake up i did not come to insult you i did not come to put you down but it is time for husbands to wake up we are killing our women we are killing our women too many women are crying behind the scenes they are picking up high blood pressure they are picking up diabetes they are picking up cancer because we are abusing them and it's not good it's not good it's time to wake up and be real men hallelujah ah uh, i feel maybe i will have to end here today and then god willing we will uh take it next week we take it next week so i don't i don't preach for too long i don't preach for too long we will do another part of this god willing next week and so share this message for all of you who are online share this message share it now share it during the week share it again make sure that the husbands are hearing because we are in to recover our marriages and all of you ladies listening please share it i can feel your pain i'm a pastor i know how the ladies feel i feel your pain if your husband is not hearing this play it at home let him hear make sure you are playing it at the time she can hear he at the time he can hear it play it at the time he can if he comes for sex tell him he must listen to this message before you give him sex he must sit down and listen to the message and take notes before you give him sex because marriage must last your marriage must last and you must not continue to suffer the way you are doing i'm seeing too many women suffering because of wicked husbands and that should not be the case so we will end here god willing next week we'll take it from how the man has the responsibility of making the home comfortable making the home comfortable i have seen several times where men they just marry a woman and they are in the house sofa curtains tv everything is the woman who is buying everything is the woman who is buying food and cooking food even the bed there are some men the bed even the bed you sleep with your wife on it is the wife who bought it ah i wish i were close to you i would give you a knock right now i'll give you a knock your wife buys a bed for you to come and sleep with her and then when she mentions it to you you say it's because you were a cheap woman that's why you had to buy your own bed you don't know it's because you are an empty-headed useless useless good for nothing man i will not let your wife tell you so that we, you say that she has refused to submit to you i am telling you i'm your fellow man if you are a man and it's your wife who must finish the house it's your wife who must provide everything including the bed you sleep with her on there is something wrong with you there's something wrong with you it is the man who builds the house then the woman comes to make it a home through wisdom a house is built by understand it's established you build the house as a man and then your wife comes to make it a home with her, her wisdom and her kindness and her whatnot i will take it from here god willing next week i don't want to go too long we we'll take it next week god willing and then uh we see what the lord will do if you have been listening to me as a wife pray for your husband because these things i've been talking about it takes a lot of grace to do pray for your husband pray for your husband but also play this message let him know that he has a responsibility that he cannot just go about thinking that a penis does not make one a man 
penis does not make one a man. Otherwise, as for penis, dogs have it, goats have it, uh, cows have it. A penis doesn't make you a man. It is your wisdom, your leadership that makes you a man. And so if you are not playing your role right as a man, then uh, don't blame your wife if she cannot submit to you. Don't blame your wife if she cannot submit to you. Play your role. Do the right thing. And your wife will naturally flow. <laughs> your wife will naturally flow with you. I'll take it from here. If you're a man, take responsibility for your home. Maybe you've been listening to me and uh, you are not born again. You are not saved. We are talking about marriage. But brother, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. After that, there will be judgment. Okay? So... Whether your marriage works or your marriage fails, we will still die and there will be judgment. And I don't want you to go to hell. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't want to go to hell, Jesus is the only way. Forget about what so-called common sense nonsense people are talking about. Forget about what other religions say. Look, religion will not take anybody to heaven. Even Christianity will not take you to heaven. It is Jesus Christ who takes you to heaven. So if Jesus Christ is not your Lord and personal Savior, then you've got to make him your Lord and personal Savior. You want to pray and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for all my sins. Thank you for giving me Jesus Christ. And Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive you. Pay for my sins. Wash me clean. Make me one of yours. Write my name in the book of life. And when I leave this earth, I want to see your face, face to face. And I want to spend eternity with you. If you've prayed this prayer, I pray that the Lord will bless and keep you. The Lord will help you to stand for him in the name of Jesus Christ. And you have to find a good Bible-believing church around where you are. And go, submit to the pastor, hear the word, hear the word, be faithful, be loyal. Support your pastor, hear the word and grow so you can stand and become a proper wife and a proper husband and a blessed Christian in the world. Hallelujah. If you've been listening to me and your marriage is struggling, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against every force of darkness that is fighting your marriage. If somebody listening to me, your marriage is at the brink of collapse. But by the wisdom of God spoken and by the prayer I'm making now, I am declaring a turn around it to become a testimony. That that marriage will not faint by it will stand. Wherever the devil has taken uh, control over, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command him to lose his hold. And I pray a total release. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak the healing of the Lord upon every marriage that is suffering. Every wife who is broken, I pray for wives this afternoon. Every wife who is hurting, may the Holy Ghost come where you are and comfort you right now. I pray that the Lord will comfort you from your inner man, throughout your body. You are a wife, you have even gone through physical pain because of your husband. Because maybe he beat you physically or he abused you, make you work unnecessary. You have to work extra hard because you have the lazy husband or an irresponsible husband. I pray for healing for your body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for strength and restoration. You are a wife, you are mentally broken, emotionally broken because your husband is always in insulting you your husband is always cursing you your wife is your husband is using things about you to insult you you are this you are that you don't have good legs you don't have good face you don't have good hair you are this your husband has been putting you down by saying bad things about you don't worry today i pray healing for your mind and i'm telling you my sister you are beautiful you are made in the image of god you are beautiful you are not ugly it is the ugliness in your husband's heart that is coming out with those words there's nothing wrong with you you might even be a wife you have not given birth and your husband is using that to put you down look your, your, your the proof of your womanhood is not in the children you give birth to Jesus, god did not tell adam that i will make him a, a procurement a, a factory sorry a, 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 no procurement what's the word uh procreative uh, factory the woman is not necessarily a procreative factory children are inherited from the law it's god who gives children but if you have not had children it doesn't make you less of a woman any less of a woman you are still a woman it is not the children you have that proves you are a woman if anybody has made you feel bad because you don't have any children yet may the lord comfort and strengthen you and i want you to know that the proof your worth as a woman is not because you have children or you don't have children so be strong be encouraged rejoice in the lord rejoice in the lord 
may that confidence come upon you may that freshness come upon you every wife who has been going through abuse may the lord deliver you today may the lord comfort you today may the lord strengthen you today may the lord bring you fresh joy and fresh hope your joy is not from your husband god will help you god will help you god will comfort you god will strengthen you whatever it is about your life that you have been ridiculed about god is restoring you god is healing you god is delivering you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ father i thank you i thank you i thank you i thank you and in the name of jesus if you don't have a church you can come to our church if you live in london united kingdom southeast you can come to shine ministries we meet in the best lead academy best lead academy best lead academy sunday mornings 10 a.m wednesdays we do home sale friday evenings 7 p.m in best lead academy wonderful services come and be fed the word of god so you can stand and grow in the lord but if you are too far away from us and you cannot make it find a good bible believing church where you are if you are in north london you can go to a wonderful church on 150 Homerton High Street in North London. Wonderful place. They meet in the afternoon, Sundays. You can go there as well. Pastor Boati and his wife. Wonderful people. You can go there. But find a good Bible believing church where you are. Commit yourself. Submit yourself to teachings. Study the word of God. Don't follow unnecessary prophecies. Follow the word of God. Prophecies are important. Once a while you need them. But they are not the main thing. The main thing is the word. Get the word in. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you until I come your way again. Go forth and have fruitful marriages. Go forth and enjoy your husband. Go forth and enjoy your, your wife. Any force that is fighting your marriage, I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to seize its power over your marriage. May your marriage be free. Any family member who has made himself an idol in that family, I evict them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Any friend, anybody who has come between you and your husband, I remove them right now from that place in the name of Jesus Christ. The two of you are going to become one mind, one heart, one spirit, one flesh, and enjoy each other. You will not cry in that marriage again. You will not suffer in that marriage again. The Lord bless it and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you until I come your way again. Shalom. God bless you.